Don in London, hello. It's July 13th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to substances and behaviour. My addictive substance, in this case, alcohol. My behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Being in the right place with the right people, doing the right things. Or having the right things. Aspiring to something. To be included. To do the best I could trying to be perfect? I don't think so. But maybe the standards I set myself to squash myself into being right for people was quite wrong for me. So I'm just a one day at a time learner how to be sober and how to live life with people, places and things. Right people, right places, doing the right things and having the right things. My needs met basic needs met, roof over my head, enough to eat, and forget about the wants of life. Although I did put some money on the UK lottery, and one bet, if you like, or one gamble, one lottery ticket, two pounds, what does it mean? No, I didn't win. But it was a bit of fun, I guess, and you never know, do you? So once in a while, why not, as long as it doesn't become addictive behaviour? and think that's going to solve my problems. I guess it will give me more problems than it's worth in the end. I'd have to give most of it away. But who to? The problems just keep on growing, don't they? So these days, not trying to make problems for myself that much. And it's good news. I've heard from somebody I haven't seen for quite a while, and they're okay. And that's wonderful, to know that somebody is still okay even though they're not in my life at the moment. I'm relieved. Sometimes we worry when we can't do anything and we wonder what to do. As in my case, in my drinking days, it seemed okay. I drank like everybody else. I considered. But in the end, I didn't. I became a 24-7 drinker after many, many attempts to stop on my own. I realised that self-will ran riot and self-will would fail me. And it was only after many attempts, and I was talking about this to a friend yesterday, after many attempts, which included denial in big, big time for me, intensive care at hospital, many, many concerns from other people saying, you've got to stop. And I said, I will. And I have. And I hadn't. I didn't know how to. And the biggest gift for me in those moments of realising, that moment of clarity that life could get no worse and I kept on waking up when I didn't want to. I would have preferred to have been dead. It could get no worse. So why not? If I can't know, if I don't know the answer, look for the answer from others who have done something about it. So, eventually, after friends, family, professionals, medical people, you name it, kept me alive. I finally found the fellowship of AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, or it found me, or somebody suggested it. Indeed, it became the only suggestion that people had for me. Why not go to AA? Please go to AA. I implore you to go to AA. So I did, and I wasn't very good at it. As if we can be. After all, Alcoholics Anonymous represented the very last place I wanted to be. It was about giving up that one thing I could rely on. Alcohol to give me oblivion in the end from life. So it took a while to get used to the idea life could happen if I stopped drinking. And I had to start from scratch. I lost everything emotionally, spiritually and physically in the process of trying to stop drinking on my own. So I'm really glad I said to myself, I need help, I can't do it on my own, and where am I going to go? So the fellowship was a part of my story from almost the beginning, and I realised I couldn't stop. But it took a while for it to take effect, if you like, or for me to be able to say, I truly, truly need help. So these days, I often need help, not in fellowship or in any particular arena, wherever help comes from. I'm very willing to accept it because I, I am better off not knowing and then finding out what is good for me and what I can do today. 
So the AA is what I talk about on these videos. I don't speak for AA. Never can, never will. It's full of unique, authentic people who speak about their life experience where they will. Mainly in the rooms or groups of AA meetings where discussion about sobriety is key. Every other aspect of life is covered. Every type of living is covered because we all come from different backgrounds. So whilst I'm, I'm, it's important to know, why can't I speak for AA? I can't. I don't want to. Sirens. What's going on? I can't and I don't want to. I don't want to represent another person and their, their views and outlook. And that's true of everyone in AA. We speak for ourselves and not each other. So what you see is what you get. What you see, if it's applicable to you in terms of experience, strength and hope, is what you get. In terms of wisdom, which might help you in your life. So how does AA work? Well, that's part of the reason why I do these videos and partly because I was asked to by people who cannot get to meetings or have disabilities of one sort or another or just feel awkward going to meetings. This is why these videos started to appear in the first place and I've been asked to keep on doing them for the time being. So on this little card here is the AA preamble and there's many AA websites around there, unofficial ones. There's no official website except one and that does not promote AA and I don't promote it. I speak a lot about it, what you see is what you get. That's attraction, not promotion. Promotion suggests there is a fix and there is no fixing in sobriety. We live life without trying to fix our feelings. Our feelings tend to fit what's happening now, emotional and spiritual. Feelings fit the moment of now. So what is AA? This is what it is. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. So there are no rules, laws or regulations. Attendance is through a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. So we all pay a little bit into the pot to pay the rent and cover literature and coffee. We don't, ha we don't hold on to money. It's just not our way. It would make it a wealth problem if that were to happen. Ally, uh, AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. But at the same time, everybody in the fellowship is allied to something, be it a set denomination, politics, organisation or institution, and probably does engage in controversy from time to time, endorsing and opposing causes. So everybody, everybody is freedom to make their choices in life with a sober head. And that's what we do. So it would be very hard for AA to be anything but about sobriety. Thank goodness for that, because nobody would go otherwise. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So in all of that, it's about how do we make the best of what we are today, whether we're feeling good about life or bad about life. Life can be good or bad. And, you know, the sometimes we could say about the joys of recovery is that it's a disaster. But we know it's a disaster. <coughs> anyway, I share some thoughts and also something from the AA literature here, Daily Reflections. July is all about the seventh step of twelve steps to live well. Twelve principles of living well. And the daily reflections for Jul uh, July 13th, humility is a gift. And I talk about that a lot, humility. It's the ability to keep on learning life. It's the sort of antidote to pride or false pride where ego rules rather than self-esteem. As long as we faced self-reliance first, a genuine reliance upon a higher power was out of the question. So I was taught to stand on my own two feet and, and fight it out. 
which meant that I thought I knew better than other people, or my opinion was better than theirs. And what I've learned is, my opinion is just my opinion. It doesn't mean it's the truth. The basic ingredient of all humility, a desire to seek to do God's will, was missing. Or to just work to good conscience. You know, what does my conscience tell me about this? How do I find the truth of now rather than the, the opinion of now which I hold? When I first came to AA, I wanted to find some of the elusive quality called humility. Learning, in other words. I didn't realise I was looking for humility because I thought it would help me get what I wanted and I, I would do anything for others, others if I thought God would somehow re reward me for it. I try to remember now that people I meet in the course of my day are as close to God as I am ever going to get while on this earth. So we're all as close to God as we can possibly get, if you have one of your understanding, a God of your understanding, or whether we're atheist or agnostic. We are all equal, after all, are we not? Well, that's where we should have started, maybe. There's a should in there. I hoped we all started as equal. But uh, mankind seems to have turned it upside down a bit. I need to pray for knowledge of God's will today, or my good conscience. And I see how my experience with hope, pain, can help other people. If I can do that, I don't need to search for humility. It has found me. So if I can connect on people equally, can connect with people equally, and understand that I am, I am full of opinions, but the most important thing is to say, well, is my opinion based on truth? And is the opinion of another person based on truth? Or if we combine both opinions, are we any closer to the truth of what's going on? Well, hopefully we are, but we can all go off the piece. As is witnessed in this country, the UK, United Kingdom, where politicians, press people and police people are finding it very, very difficult to separate out the issues regarding a humiliating, not humility, humiliating situation where people have gone along with something for many years. And now it seems that the tragedy that has unfolded has impacted on everyone, except one person, the person who was paying paying for everything. Anyway, enough of that. It, but it illustrates how off the truth people can get. You know, people want to be truthful. Politicians want to do the right thing. The press want to find out if the right thing is being done. And the police are there to make sure the right things are being done. Or rather, the judiciary, when things go wrong, is there to unearth more. So even nations can get it wrong. So humility says to me, I can get it wrong every day by just working on my own opinion. So my thought of the day was, if I don't know what is right for me, then I don't know what is right for you. When I hear the experience, strength and hope of living life sober, my choices improve. More freedom and better outcomes in the moment of now. So my choices improve if I hear wisdom which resonates, I hate to use that word, resonate, overused and under misunderstood. My choices improve if I can hear the truth and the wisdom from other people, so I get more freedom in the moment of now. My feelings fit to the moment of now. I'm living in the moment. So it's not that difficult to be spiritual. After all, everything is spiritual. If I'm not in the moment of now, my spiritual experience is not very good, because I'm either reliving the past or trying to find out what the future ought to be for me and I'm missing the point. Humility is a gift, this is from another year, sharing experience, strength and hope of what we know helps us support our fellows and our communities. Listening to experience, strength and hope informs me of what we don't know. Humility to learn what I can do and cannot do and the wisdom to live the difference, to live to the good of what can be done. Needs met, wants forgotten is often what I feel in my head. And another year, humility just for today. Pride and ego can impede my spiritual progress today. Seeing the truth of now is more important. Humility and esteem, confidence, this is what step seven is all about. Uh, my shortcomings are not humility 
and pride getting in the way. So if I have humility, I have better, a better chance to find the truth, love and wisdom that is around me. And with humility, what are my options? Ask for help. Learn what I can and cannot do. With each step I take today, open, honest and willing, more is revealed of how to love, be loved and useful. And how to love people. I'm still learning every day how to do that, because we have to start again often. How to be loved and useful. Those are good things. So in step seven where we say humbly ask him to remove our shortcomings, the him in this case is God, or depending on our belief system, I know I've been agnostic, atheist and believer over the years, depending on my life situation. Sometimes it felt like there was no God, but that's because I shut down, I wasn't looking outward at all. And if God works through people, which is the, the easiest way to understand it for me, wisdom learned, truth learned, love accepted from others, then a power greater than me is certainly working in my life. So the higher power for me is all around me, in the moment of now. There is no other place that a higher power could be. But I could ignore it and go back to self-will run riot. And where would that take me back to? Well, very dark places, I could guarantee. I don't need to imagine them, I've been there. And I don't need to make life shorter than it is. It is. Life, life is short. So I think I need to stop for a bit. Until tomorrow, maybe. So what helps me in any moment? It is the uh, prayer, serenity prayer, which is, it doesn't matter whether you're atheist, agnostic, or believer, the quality of life is improved by our outward looking and letting things in to improve our outlook. And that's what the serenity prayer or meditation is there to do. And I'm not frightened of the word God anymore. And I know I'm not God. So some progress has been made over the years. And uh, you know my upbringing didn't lend me to understand anything to do with love as it is in reality. And it's nobody's fault either, because those were difficult times for my parents. My parents didn't understand much about that, but they did love each other but they didn't express it in ways which we could understand as kids. And the same is true of much of the learning around school and family and community. Love was in short supply, or evidence of it was. Just the consequences of when it went wrong most often. The serenity prayer, to God or in good conscience. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference, for me in the moment and just for today.